The Sexy Brutale is a murder mystery game where the mystery is not figuring out who did the crime, but figuring out how to stop it. While the game's title might sound like a French prostitute's Mortal Kombat fatality move, the Sexy Brutale is actually a quaint puzzle game that plays like an Agatha Christie novel set in the board game Cluedo with a Groundhog Day theme mixed in for good measure. As usual, I've put up a written review of the game on my website, which will be linked to in the description. I always like to state the score up front, so I'll tell you that I've awarded this game a top score of 5 out of 5. Yeah, I like this game a lot. My previous videos have been long form critiques, however this video is much more akin to a review, albeit a bit longer than most because I lack the ability to be concise. Those previous videos included tons of spoilers, but I'm not going to do that here. If you're incredibly sensitive to spoilers, then I recommend listening to this review instead of watching it. However, I genuinely believe that this video is as spoiler free as it can be while still helping you make an informed purchasing decision. To be even more precise, the video will spoil the tutorial mystery, which really isn't saying much because the game basically guides you through it anyway. I will show clips from later parts of the game, but I will not spoil those puzzles. And I think that's about it for the caveats, let's get stuck into the good stuff. The Sexy Brutale is the first game by Cavalier Game Studios, a UK indie studio formed by a couple of previous Lionhead Studios and Electronic Arts developers and created in conjunction with Tequila Works. I asked the developers why the game was called the Sexy Brutale and they said that sexy refers to the allure of gambling and brutale is a reference to the gruesome or brutal nature of the casino. I still think it sounds like a sex move but who am I to argue with the developers. You play as a priest called Lafcadio Boone. La Laf Sadio? Laf Lafcadio? You play as a priest called Boone. Boone wakes up in the Sexy Brutale casino mansion, owned by a mysterious figure known as the Marquis. Tonight is the night for one of the Marquis' annual masked balls, except this year something is very, very wrong. A mysterious woman in red appears and drops a few cryptic messages before leaving Boone by himself to explore the beautiful mansion and figure out why he's here. As you'll see from the tutorial which we'll be playing in the background for a minute or two, the guests of the Sexy Brutale are being murdered by the staff and it's Boone's job to stop that happening while working out what the hell is going on. I'll talk through the tutorial quickly and show clips in the background and I'll probably show a bit more footage of this near the end of the video as well. The tutorial does a phenomenal job of introducing you to all the mechanics and then leaving you to use them of your own accord. By spying through a keyhole you'll see Reginald Sixpence get gunned down by a mystery figure. Don't worry, you haven't failed at the first step. After the murder, time is reset and you wake up at midday in a different room. This time you hide in a closet and watch as a member of staff grabs a gun, checks that it's loaded and then murders Sixpence again. Once again, time rewinds, but now it's your job to save Sixpence. By spying on Sixpence through a keyhole, you can watch as he discards a blank shotgun shell from a safe that he's rummaging through. Boone can then quickly pick up the blank shell and slip it into the shotgun. The member of staff tries to kill Sixpence again, but obviously fails. Mission accomplished. Or fait accompli, should I say. Sixpence gives you the ability to use clocks throughout the mansion as save points, and to fast forward time occasionally. Boiled down to the basics, that's really everything there is to know about what you'll do in the Sexy Brutale. First you watch a murder being committed, then you figure out how to stop it. There's no punishment for failing to stop the murder other than having to watch or listen to an adorable guest meet their grisly demise. If you fail to stop the murder then just wait for the end of the day or use your watch to restart time and try again. Simple. The murders get progressively more complicated to stop after the tutorial, although I wouldn't say the puzzles ever reach the fiendish stage. In addition to spying through keyholes, Boone needs to listen in on conversations to gain passwords to doors for example and figure out where residents are going and why. Boone retains all knowledge earned during the day even after time resets itself, however any keys or physical items picked up are lost. This isn't as annoying as it sounds. The items you need are rarely far away so backtracking is kept to a minimum. There are six murders to solve after the tutorial. These murders play out every time you reset the clock. Even though you can often hear other murders taking place, you can only actually prevent one murder at a time due to the layout of the mansion and minor metroidvania elements that block you from progressing too fast. Every time Boone prevents a murder, he gains a new ability from the guest he saved. The most basic of these abilities are enhanced hearing and lockpicking skills, but there are more inventive ones that I refuse to spoil here. At this point you might be wondering why Boone doesn't just warn the guests that they're about to be murdered or perhaps do the heroic thing and tap the murderer politely on the shoulder and ask him kindly not to kill anyone. This is where the masks come into play. The guests and staff can all interact with each other, but no one can officially see Boone or react to him. Instead there's a slightly odd mechanic where the characters freeze when Boone walks into the room and their masks come off and slowly hunt him down. Boone takes damage from these masks but it's incredibly slow and you're unlikely to ever die from this so long as you make a vague effort to leave the room. 
This might sound incredibly contrived and, well, it is. I'm not a huge fan of the system but I also can't think of a better one. The player, and therefore Boone, need to have a physical presence to interact with objects but clearly if you could interact with the guests then the entire point of the game would be lost. I briefly thought a better approach might just be to stop the player from entering rooms with guests in them but then you still have the problem that a guest could enter a room that you're already in as part of their routine. Ultimately the Sexy Brutal is a puzzle game and this weird system is just a necessary evil to keep things moving. Besides, it's much more fun to interfere with proceedings in more subtle ways instead of getting directly involved. The mansion is huge and intricately woven together for the most part. I rarely got lost, however when I did need to use the map I often found it sorely lacking. It has too much detail and yet not enough at the same time. The map displays random furniture which makes it harder to spot the important closets to hide in and chests to unlock. Strangely, picking up a key doesn't add that key to the map, so you'll have to remember where they all are which is at odds with other items of knowledge which are permanently added to your map for you. Navigation is also a bit tricky when moving between floors or through secret passages, however typically you only need to be in one part of the mansion for each murder, so getting lost isn't a huge problem. Every now and again I had to remind myself that this was a puzzle game and not a reverse hitman game. The pace of the music induces tension and panic but after resetting the day a few times you'll start to relax and realise that you can take your time with the puzzles. Each day has more than enough time to prevent a murder once you've worked out how to do it and there are grandfather clocks dotted around that you can use to save your progress in different parts of the mansion to get yourself closer to where you need to be. The pocket watch can also be used to skip forward in time however you need to be at one of the grandfather clocks to do this and even then you can only skip to 4pm or 8pm. More flexibility to control time would have been nice for those rare occasions when I was waiting around for time to progress. As is common with indie games, the sexy towers all style over sheer horsepower. Fortunately when the style is this good you won't complain. The quasi isometric presentation only allows you to view one room or corridor at a time which is restricting but in a way it fits with the premise of the game. There wouldn't be much point in Boone spying on people in other rooms if the player can already see inside those rooms. Everything in the game from the homely feel of the mansion's bedrooms to the quirky casino to the hidden rooms and passageways all feel lovingly rendered and implemented. The mansion is split into sections and each section feels different from the last which helps you remember where you are in addition to keeping you engaged. No effort was spared in making the mansion feel like a real if incredibly creepy place from statues and portraits to unusual fish to let's just say an unwanted house guest with an appetite. The art design isn't just there to look nice, it provides plenty of visual clues to help the player solve the puzzles. Objects that can be picked up are clearly marked in the yellow circle and items with a blue circle can be investigated for further clues. There's no pixel hunting to do here. Additionally a flame appears around Boone as he approaches a door that has a character on the other side and if you enter a room you shouldn't be in everything goes dark with only the masks and exit points illuminated. The scenery even includes not so subtle clues to murders such as large neon lighting for the what's your poison bar. Finally the exaggerated design of the characters helps flesh out their personalities which is essential given the limited dialogue and lack of voice acting. It's incredible how much emotion and personality is extracted from such limited animations. I emphasise with every character despite barely hearing them communicate at all. The more a game sacrifices graphical realism the more it risks losing players who simply don't connect with a style of presentation. I can't imagine that happening in too many instances here. The Sexy Brutal is incredible to look at. There's a clear cartoony presentation and yet it does feel like an actual mansion. It's more immersive than it has any right to be. You wouldn't expect a game like this to have too many problems performance wise and yeah, it runs pretty damn smoothly. I experienced some slowdown when moving between rooms on perhaps two or three occasions and once it lasted for maybe a full second. However the game never crashed and never dropped frames while I was in control of Boone. In my two previous videos I've been reluctant to discuss a game's music and sound in any great detail because I'm not all that attentive when it comes to musical scores or technical aspects of sound design. However I absolutely have to go into some detail here. The Sexy Brutal has some of the best music I've ever heard in a game. I've never thought to describe a game's musical score as funny before but that is the most apt word to describe my thoughts when first visiting the casino. I stopped playing and just listened with almost childlike wonder to the infectious and enthusiastic notes that seemed in stark contrast to what was going on in the rest of the mansion. While the music in the casino wing is probably my favourite, every section of the mansion has a different musical theme, further helping the player keep a mental map running in their head. The 
This music also adds tension to the game when technically it shouldn't have any. As I mentioned, the music speeds up as the time of the murder gets closer, making you rush even though there's rarely any need to. You'll also notice that each murder has a distinctive audio clue associated with it and you'll hear that noise every day even after you've solved the associated murder. Remember the gunshot from the tutorial? You'll hear that gunshot at about 4 o'clock every afternoon as Sixpence gets murdered every time the clock is reset despite you supposedly having saved him. You'll also be haunted by the sounds of murders you haven't yet solved. A bell will ring in the early evening. The electricity will flicker at night. You'll know what's coming and know you need to figure out a way to stop it. The dialogue is distinctly British with dry wit and occasional silly humour adding further levity to the horrible circumstances taking place in the mansion. I'd have loved the lines to have been accompanied by some appropriately hammy voice acting but it's not necessary to get a laugh from the script. Unfortunately I did notice some issues with the stereo sound. Every so often sound would only appear in one ear at inappropriate times. For example occasionally when I walked down a corridor say from right to left the sound of my footsteps would only be in my left ear. At other times the music would suddenly only be in one ear after moving to a new room. This didn't seem at all consistent with the source of the music and could be a touch distracting. The isometric layout of the rooms requires lots of twisting and turning but it feels like the game got confused by its own layout when it came to sound design. For most of my playthrough I assumed the story was just a token effort to tie together an excuse for a fun set of puzzles. All that stuff about the masks seemed like a gimmick and invisible walls would occasionally block my path in ways that made little sense other than the game just not wanting me to progress down the corridor yet. I didn't particularly care much mind you because I was having so much fun figuring out how to prevent the murders. As it happens I was doing the game a huge injustice. Those invisible walls I mentioned weren't actually random although I won't explain why here. I quickly went from being annoyed at a cheap device being used to block my progress to impressed at the use of an inventive way to replace the boring use of coloured keys common in other games. Listening to the dialogue of guests and staff gives a few hints to the wider story but most of the clues come from the woman in red that you see at the beginning of the game. It's frustratingly obvious right away that she could just explain everything in a few minutes if she stopped melting into the floor but where would be the fun in that? It's a bit reminiscent of Destiny's I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain thing except we do eventually get some answers here. By the end it was clear the game was taking its story seriously however the conclusion still came as a huge shock. It's poignant, beautifully told and thought provoking in a way that caught me off guard. Admittedly one of the thoughts it provoked was I'm not sure this makes any sense. However, not that many puzzle games bother with a story so intriguing. I won't talk about the story in detail. 95% of it is revealed at the end of the game so it's basically all a spoiler and like I said I'm avoiding those in this video. I loved the ending but I did need to turn off the sceptical part of my brain and just buy into the premise. In case you're wondering, you do get an explanation for why Boone is continually preventing murders and even rewinding time but I would encourage you not to focus on that explanation. If you do you'll miss a touching story that almost stands on its own as a powerful look at remorse and guilt. I've never seen a story like this in a game or any form of media for that matter. I want to be clear though, I'm largely referring to the short story told at the end of the game not the story as a cohesive whole which for me doesn't quite work. Like the visual presentation, the story might be a bit hit and miss. For every player who gets the feels there will be another who thinks it's an overly convoluted explanation for a simple premise. I can genuinely see both sides but personally I got a lot out of it. As I hinted at before, the ending isn't really one of those that makes you want to jump back into the game for a second playthrough with all your additional knowledge. However, there are collectibles to pick up if you want to extend your time in the mansion. You can collect 52 playing cards and the party invitations for each guest. The playing cards are found all over the place, they're often just lying around on the floor but some are hidden away or you have to solve a basic puzzle to get them. A few of the cards might require you to do favours for, um, let's just say guests of the casino. Without going into spoiler territory I will say that if you collect all the cards well perhaps you should find something to do with them. In addition to the playing cards there are 9 party invitations to find, one for each guest. I was a little disappointed with these. Without being too specific, 5 of them require actual thought to find and 4 of them are kind of in the same place. I didn't mind the playing cards being easy to find because there were so many of them but it's a shame that not all the invitations had an equal amount of thought put into finding them. I mentioned the lack of dialogue in the game which might suggest you have to take the characters at face value. That's actually not the case. You can collect information on all of the guests and every single room in the mansion and it's well worth reading. The sense of humour of the writers really shines through here and it makes me wonder whether more dialogue could have been squeezed into the main game. <music> 
Puzzle games aren't easy to review. If I get stuck in a game like Uncharted then I can usually tell whether I was just being an idiot or whether it was bad level design. In pure puzzle games there's always a temptation to blame getting stuck on the fact that it was a bad puzzle. Conversely if you never get stuck you might think the game is too easy when perhaps you just got lucky. Ultimately all I can do is talk in generalisations. I personally didn't think the game was too hard. If anything it might actually be too easy. I briefly got stuck on one of the puzzles but my main source of frustration was figuring out what I was supposed to do between puzzles. It's impossible for me to know if this is bad design or again just me being an idiot but I think the game could have used a few more pointers between missions on a couple of occasions. Obviously I don't want to be told how to solve a puzzle but I'd like to know where the puzzle is. Puzzle games often struggle to raise the challenge as the player progresses while also avoiding unnecessary frustration. Apart from the issue I discussed I never got frustrated with the Sexy Brutal thanks to its simple and intuitive mechanics. You never need to think like the developer. There aren't number puzzles or line puzzles that have complicated sets of rules to follow. The only rules in the Sexy Brutal are natural ones like needing to spy on residents through keyholes or being able to move objects around to catch would-be murderers unaware. Even if you do get stuck, wandering around the mansion is a genuine pleasure. I never tired of watching events play out like clockwork and at the end of the game I was desperate for more murders to solve. The puzzles got progressively more complicated with each murder following a gentle difficulty curve but it did feel like the game ended just a touch too soon. Two more murders of increasing difficulty would have been perfect. While I try not to take price into consideration when reviewing games, I don't judge indie games against AAA titles when the indie game is priced as an indie game. Just to reiterate that last point, it's when the indie game is priced as an indie game. That bit is important, isn't it Hello Games? To be clear, I don't mean I give indie games an easy ride, but I am more flexible when it comes to the length of the experience. That said, I wouldn't describe the Sexy Brutal as a short game by any stretch. At the time of making this video, the Sexy Brutal was on sale for $20 in the US, and for your money you should get a good 8 hours of play if you're going for 100% completion. It took me nearly 9 hours, although you may not get stuck a couple of times like I did. Even a conservative estimate of 8 hours seems more than reasonable given the budget price. Unfortunately the conclusion to the story doesn't lend itself particularly well to DLC or even a sequel. The mansion is also so perfectly crafted that I'm not sure new murders could easily be slotted into the existing assets. That's a shame because I'd love to revisit the mansion to watch more people get killed, as sadistic as that sounds. This has been said many times, however I think it bears repeating. The first half of 2017 has been a phenomenal one for gamers. Like many of you I've been consumed with the constant onslaught of big budget and often high quality games this year. The time I spent playing the Sexy Brutal could have been spent playing Neo, Nier or Persona 5, and yet I don't regret a single minute I spent with this game. It's nice to take a break from the 40 hour plus open world monstrosities. As you probably know if you follow this channel, the previous game I played was Mass Effect Andromeda and I hated it. I spent about 50 hours playing that game and then I wrote a 23,000 word script, recorded the audio and edited the footage into a 2.5 hour video. After all that I was exhausted and frankly the whole experience had been so unpleasant that I couldn't find the motivation to play anything. Then the sexy brutal came along and it was just what I needed. I now feel refreshed and ready to play another big game. I'm still going to do longer video critiques like the ones I did for Horizon and Andromeda but I needed this little one as a refresher. If you want to play something a little different then I can't recommend this game enough. It's the perfect palette cleanser between big budget releases. Yes the lack of challenge is a touch disappointing but it doesn't detract from the sheer joy I got from bouncing along to the music or the sadness from watching a man try to save his friend from inevitable death. When the main problem with a game is that you just want more that's usually a good sign. The Sexy Brutal is absolutely worth your time and I highly recommend you give it a go. If I had Boone's powers I'd rewind time and play it all over again. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button, if you didn't please hit dislike. If you want to leave any comments I'll try and get back to you and if you want to see my future videos hit subscribe. You can also hit the little bell icon which I believe will give you a notification when I do post a new video. I don't do it too often so I doubt that will be considered spam but obviously it's up to you guys whether you'd find that annoying or not. I'm going to end this video with about 90 seconds of footage from the end game credits. I think the music is phenomenal like it has been for most of the game so it seems like a good way to sign out. Thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll have another video out in May.
smile.